Time for the first of six senior Rotax heats. It's heat one, A and B. Let's take you through the starting grid. Macaulay Bishop will start on pole position. Alongside him will be the fastest driver in group one earlier on today. Tommy van der Stroys from the Netherlands. Luca Thiel and Jaden Teen round out row two with Bolouet and Archie Bussell, row three. It's an all-Austrian row four with Lukas Schlegel and Christoph Sala. Camille Baloche and Zino Valka round out the top ten with Lawrence Herbos and Giorgio Markenstein rounding out row six. Alexander Lemaire Sikra and Svere Uben are on row seven with an all-French row eight, Matisse Carnejac and Manolo Sendin. Paul Hamburg from Estonia and Belgium Simon Pierre round out row number nine. Completing the top 20, it's Martin Geiskens uh, with Tino Pothier, Luca Brima, Maximilian Eckel, and also Rick Mui, uh, Moiwes. Um, and the thing is, is that Simon Pierre has shown up twice on our timing screens. So uh, it is 23 drivers that will be in this race. It's going to be again. 10 minutes plus an additional lap for this and the next one coming along shortly. So 10 minutes set on the timer plus an additional lap of this 1,360 metre 12 turn anti clockwise circuit. It's going to be down to Van der Stroy, uh, to Bishop and Van der Stroys on the front row to control the rolling start. So once they get past the uh, points of no return, which is the red line, which has got an orange cone on either side of it coming out of turn number 11. They have to be pretty much in formation. The drivers start weaving from side to side, getting themselves steeled and ready for 10, for around about 11 minutes of racing action. Van der Stroys lines up alongside Bishop as they start to filter their way out of the final corner. They split, head into the tram lines, revs rise, lights are on, lights are out first time, and we are underway in racing. And Macaulay Bishop tries to cover off um, Tommy van der Stroys, but someone was trying to filter through in the middle of all of that. Not Jaden Teen, probably. Maybe Lucas Schlegel, I believe. As they make their way through into the Europe Alarm, off of turn number six. Oh, it's getting a bit full wide coming out of the corner. Two drivers have managed to scarper away into the distance. As uh, so this is going to be going to be a bit too close for comfort. You can go too wide through turn seven off of the Europe Alarm, but you try three, uh, it never works. It never works. I've seen drivers go left. I've seen uh, off track. I've seen drivers go right off track and end up rejoining at quite a high velocity, especially if the, glass, uh, the grass, which will be still very damp in places or around the majority of the circuit. But out of the final corner, who is leading the way? It is Bolouet. Having started fifth on the road, He's being followed by Kraft Motorsports, Lukas Schlegel, Macaulay Bishop, Tommy van der Stroys, Luca Thiel. They round out the top five. Christopher Sala in the 371 has got Camille Baloche not too far behind with uh, Lawrence Herbos, uh, Matisse Carnejac and Jaden Teen rounding out the top ten. Archie Battle has also dropped five places. He's currently in 11th position. Paul Hamburg has moved up two places to 15th and looks to make some further strides forward. As change for position between Lawrence Herbos and Camille Baloche. So a few new drivers starting to make their presence known with a lot of moves in the off season, particularly between uh, drivers that return to championships and either move up classes or switch teams, and Bolouet already making a, an initial good impression. Having started from the inside of row number three, he was on the right part of the circuit when everything started to go a bit crazy in front of him. He managed to circumnavigate his way through that and has got a seven-tenth of a second lead ahead of Lucas Schlegel. Macaulay Bishop, Tommy van der Stroys, Lucas Thiel continue to round out the top th five. As all, that was a moment there for the 3-4-9 Zeno Falca with the Larea RT1 team. 
uh, had Archie Bustle up the inside. Lawrence Herbos again gets past this time Christoph Salah as we've got a cart being pushed by the driver off the circuit off of turn number 12. I think that might be the 3-3-4 or might not be the 3-3-4. I did catch a 3 and a 4 at the front and the end of the number. And yep, that is uh, newest from the Netherlands that is out of the race. Meantime, Macaulay Bishop is now ahead of Luca Schlegel. Tommy van der Sloys last year as a senior was very, very impressive indeed. And now he's going to put that to good use. No longer being mechanics by his dad, Martin, who I know very will, very much will be biting his fingernails to the quick tomorrow. Uh, so Tommy very much being able to carry on with his racing and this gives him the opportunity to you know not have the worries of dad getting nervous all the time and you know through that initial learning phase as a micro he went from micro straight up to juniors and he isn't exactly uh, he's quite a tall chap I mean I still remember when he was knee high to a grasshopper and he's taller than me and I get the Richard Hammond complex whenever I walk up to him Bolowek continues to lead after lap number four. We're on to lap five, and he's got a 1.1 second advantage over Macaulay Bishop. Matisse Kanajak in eighth, who's now made up seven positions from 15th to now be in eighth position, has just put in the fastest lap of the race, 55.696 seconds by the French driver, D351. So, again, it's just that sort of cat and mouse game. Luca Thiel has got Lawrence Herbos not too far behind, as well as Christopher Sala from Austria. And there is Matisse Kanajak, who's now gone to Jan Dams and his crew. As Herbos dives up the inside of Luca Thiel, who loses out to Christopher Sala. And that could be Kanajak trying to get through on the German through turn 10. But the 399, who's now with Dorm Motorsport, uh, says no. Kanajak through turn 12 says yes. And Thiel was trying to get through on the cart back through turn 12, but Kanajak planted the cart. There goes Luca Thiel up the inside. That's going to give the 3 1 3 of uh, Camille Baloch the opportunity to be a part of this three cart battle as they come out of turn number four into five. Five minutes to go plus an additional lap. And Kanajak looks for the window of opportunity. Luca Thiel shuts the door coming out of turn six onto the Yorapalan, and now they've got the 3.59 of Jaden Teen closing down. Now, Jaden Teen uh, joined Dan Holland Racing last year and has just got through on Baloche through at turn nine, made easy work of that and did the old tap, the old right-hand side of the race helmet, and that's just sort of like, come on, think, let's just go, let's try and chase down those in front, and I know for a fact when... Jaden Teen has got the wind beneath his side pods. He absolutely flies around this circuit. And now he's looking for a move on Karnijak. As the 3-1-9 of Luca Schlegel has now got in front. That's Lawrence Herbos who's made the move through. So Schlegel down, not just one. Make that two positions by turn six on lap seven. That's Christopher Sala from Austria, that's his countryman that's just got through on him. So down to sixth position for the 319, running with uh, Killian Kraft's operation at Kraft Motorsport, who have a good collaboration with uh, the Gilbert family over in uh, Dolroy in Scotland through Potenza Racing Engines. So three and a half minutes still to go. 22 out of the 23 drivers are still circulating. We have got another, oh right, that's off at Cafe Corner at turn 10. And that is Luca Thiel. Oh dearie me, the uh, German driver managing to get the cart fired back up, but he's lost a significant amount of places. He's right towards the bottom of the top 20. Disaster for Luca Thiel, he's actually outside of the top 20 now because Tino Pothier from France is ahead and rounds out the top 20. Hopefully that chassis isn't too badly impacted. Not really. I mean, that just goes to show that you have a moment, you carry too much momentum in a corner. And I think Luca Thiel just found out that, well, the grass, the, the grass on the outside of Cafe Corner, plus the slight runoff area, there's a lot of there's a lot of mud as well. And that can be very, very unconducive to how your cart performs. If you go deep into turn 10 
and especially if Luca Tia was trying to pull a move and he's compromised himself by being a bit too eager to make that move stick and it can just go completely wrong and it went south for the 399 yet to see him come through but that was a very difficult uh, part of the racetrack for him to well that was a very very easy mistake to make at that part of the circuit Archie Bustle in the meantime in the 322 trying to close in on Francis Mathis Karnijak who still is holding on to eighth position uh, Tommy van der Stroys has got Macaulay Bishop uh, well, is now behind him. So uh, Van der Soys in the meantime has got through on the 367. Uh, based out of Hoddesdon in Hertfordshire, not too far from Rye House. But Bolowet has done pretty well so far. Now, this is his first time out in seniors. And sometimes you get the welcome to the club, like Van der Soys did a uh, the other year. But then... These younger drivers in this class, you know, they range anywhere from fo the from 14 to as high as early 30s. Right, there is a move by the 371 of Christoph Sala on Lawrence Herbos. The 398 from Bouvin Power gets back through on the drag race through into turn seven. We have got just over 60 seconds of this race, plus an additional lap to go. Bolouette now needs to have eyeballs in the back of his head because van der Stroys is pretty much with him. They're now coming out of turn number 11. And it's two cart lengths, not even that, on the approach into turn 12. Now van der Stroys will try and hook up the traction out of the final corner. He's going to get the slipstream. They both look over their right shoulder. And Bonoet not only sees Tommy van der Stroys, who tried to stick his nose up through turn two, thought better of it. And now he's going to go through at three. Loet keeps it wide to give him racing room. Now van der Stroys gets through. Bishop is there now. Tries to go for the crisscross. Through at turn six. And the 3-6-7 with Dan Holland racing makes the move six. So Bolouet held on for an incredibly long time. And considering the fact he, he's done three years as a junior driver. Nothing before that. Started very late in karting. And uh, was vice champion, well, was runner up at the, the uh, 2023 Rotax Max Challenge Grand Finals. And despite his inexperience, he's now with a team that he's been with for the last three years. And when you get that gestation period, and then it becomes consistent work with a team that you are integrated with, that's when things start to flourish. Final lap underway. Van der Stoy is now ahead of Bishop. We've got eight more corners to go. Make that seven. We head into turn six for the final time. Bishop, can he get the run down the Europolan? He's closing on van der Stoys. That gap is going to be next to nothing. And we've got a cart off the circuit. That's Sendat in the 309 who's out. So it could be a run to the line between van der Stoys and Bishop. Bishop sweeps to the outside through into turn number 10. Now he's going to get the run and he's used, well, he, w he went to the outside and then got to the inside. I'm not too sure what the race stewards might decide on that one, but van der Stoys muscles his way through. Bolowet could make this a three-way across the line, but van der Stoys by 15 thousandths wins the opening senior Rotax heat ahead of Macaulay Bishop. And the top three covered by 0.11 of a second, thanks to the 324 of Bolouet from Belgium, who literally, for most of this race, up until two laps to go, led it. Uh, Christopher Sala from Austria rounds out the top four. Top five covered by six tenths, rounded out by Belgium's Lawrence Herbos. Jaden Teen takes six ahead of Lucas Schlegel. Archie Bussel manages to finish in eighth ahead of Svede Uben and Francis Matisse Karnijak. Zeno Falke in 11th, head of Martin Geiskens. Luca Brima, Paul Hamburg from Estonia, uh, head of Giorgio Markenstein, uh, Alexandre Lemaire Sikre. Then we've got Maximilian Eckel, Tino Pothier, Camille Baloch, who was fighting in the top 10, uh, unfortunately finishes down in 19th position. Luca Thiel uh, finishes in 20th after what could have been with uh, Manolo Senda and Rick. Uh, Mew is uh, rounding out the uh, 23 drivers. Mew is out on lap two. Sendat out with two laps to go.